All right. In this video, we are going to take a look at composition of functions. I've uh, put a couple of functions up here for us to start with. Uh, it's may generate some questions at the end as well that we can uh, try to come up with some interesting solutions for. But to begin with, what I'm going to do is build the arrows for both the function f and for the function g. So we'll do uh, f here in blue. Starts, as always, with the x. First thing we need to do is square that. And then multiply by 3. And then subtract 5. So that all together is the arrow for or the arrow diagram for f. We'll go ahead and do g of x in green. Start with the x there. First thing I need is a sign change to make it a negative x. Then we will add one, uh, reciprocate, and multiply by two. And that, those four arrows together constitute the function g. And this again, back here, was our function f. So, when we want to do the composition, I'm just going to show this a little bit differently here. I'm going to grab these things that are together there. I'm going to drag this down, our function g, and get all, all of that into a single piece. Uh, basically, all that's happening here, if they want uh, f of g of x, then it says the first thing that happens in f of g of x, I start with the x and I run it through the function g, and that would give me this first, and then I take that whole g of x, the output from the g of x, and run it into the f, so my f arrow comes and attaches right here at the end. The x is no longer at the beginning of that. And so right now I'm looking at f of g of x. And I can start with x down at this end and do the things that it says to do. So take the x, change the sign, add 1, reciprocate, multiply by 2. So that's going to give me a 2 over 1 minus x. That whole thing gets squared multiplied by 3, and I subtract 5 from that. So this part right here should be f of g of x. And if I want to do g of f of x then, okay, not a significantly different thing. Let's get this up out of our way here. If I want to do the g of f of x, then all that means is the arrow diagram for f is going to happen first, and then the arrow diagram for g is going to happen after that. And put my little x there at the beginning and start over with x at the very front here, and I do what the arrows say to do. So the x gets squared, multiply by 3, subtract 5. I change the sign on that whole thing and add 1, and then reciprocate and multiply by 2. So a little bit of simplifying I can do in the denominator. Uh, it's a negative 3x squared plus 5 plus 1, so negative 3x squared plus 6 in the denominator, and that is g of f of x. Put those guys together, and there is our g of f of x.
And that's, that's really all there is to it. You can maybe start to see here at the beginning that the function is just built. Every one of these arrows is actually a composition in itself. And uh, we'll probably make another video about uh, breaking up a function and showing it as a composition of other functions. This arrow diagrams do this very naturally. Now, the question that usually comes up at this point would have something to do with you know, a common mistake that kids make if they have a function that looks like 3x squared plus 5x minus 7. And now all of a sudden we've got x's in multiple, multiple locations, which is not a naturally nice thing to do with the arrow diagrams. I have come to some workarounds for this. Um, basically, we can do things with the arrow diagram depending on what it is we're trying to accomplish. If it's composition that we're trying to do, then we can actually make this work to borrow one of our other functions from above. If we're trying to solve or write an inverse, then this is not an invertible function as it is, so we can't do that, and, uh, and we wouldn't be able to solve because we couldn't represent this. Um, in the way that I'm about to and still have an inverse operation on it. So what I'll do with my calculus classes, because we need to deal with things like this, but it also would work in the context, context of composition, would be if I was trying to do um, the arrow for H here, I start with the X, and I'm going to put multiple empty sets of parentheses on here because I just kind of have to. So I have a 3 times a, an empty parentheses squared plus 5 times an empty set of parentheses. And I could put the minus 7 on there or I could add the minus 7 as a separate arrow. And so I can represent H this way. Um, I get those all together. Then I could do something like I got rid of my other arrows here. But if I wanted to do um, f or I'll do uh, h of g of x. If we want h of g of x, then we need to do the g arrow first, which started with the x, change sign, um, and added one, reciprocated, and multiplied by 2. And so there's my function g again, and here's my function h at the end. And so this would be h of g of x. The g of x happens first. And the way this works is I Start with the x, it changes the sign, adds a 1, reciprocates and multiplies by 2. It gives me just g of x as I knew it. And then I'm going to take that, and that goes inside the parentheses that are on that next arrow. And I subtract 7, and this is my expression for h of g of x. I could do a little simplifying on, but um, that's how I deal in compositions with functions with uh, more than one occurrence of the x um, with an arrow diagram.